Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking some thrifted finds and upcycling them to something that is more my style. I think y'all going to enjoy today's video. Let's get started on the projects. And I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I thrifted these two frames because it was a matching set. I really love the dark wood color and how it had a large mat and a small picture but I do not really care for the pictures inside and I don't really care for this little gold part either. So I'm going to see if we can fix that. I pulled out the mat and the picture is actually attached to the piece. So what I'm going to do since I don't like the gold anyway is I'm very carefully going to go in with my artist brush and I'm going to paint the gold and I'm also going to paint the picture. Okay, change of plans. Raw silk is almost the exact same color as the mat. The mat does have a few age spots and it does have this little gold piece right here. So I just decided I'm going to go ahead and give the whole mat a fresh coat of paint. I think that was a good call to paint the entire mat. I think this looks so much better. This is IOD's Milo's Pages Transfer. You have fruit, you have flowers, you have insects, you have vegetables, you have eggs. You have butterflies and you have fish and other things and you also have mushrooms. So you can make a whole lot of artwork with this one transfer. Since my frame is vertical, I think I'm going to pick some fish to put in here. I decided on these two guys and I absolutely love how they have the names to go with them. You just want to remove your transfer from the backer and then you're going to put it right in the center of your piece and all of your transfers come with a transfer tool and you're just going to rub it and let the image come off onto your mat. Look how beautiful that looks. I actually like all the layers of this mat and now having it the same color, it just gives it a little dimension but it's not too busy and I feel like the fish with the name is just perfect. How cute is this recipe box that I thrifted the other day? Unfortunately, it has yellowed over time, so we are going to give it a fresh new look. There's lots of texture on this painting, and I am going to add texture to this piece, but the first step is try to sand down as much of it as possible. That way I have a clean surface to start with. For my base layer of texture, I'm going to be using Fusion Paint in the color Soapstone. It is a beautiful bluish gray color. And then I'm going to add in Fusion's Fresco Texturing Powder. I'm going to do one large spoonful, and this will give this blue paint some texture to add to my piece. Then I'm going to take my paint and fresco mixture and I'm just going to stipple it onto my piece and this is going to create texture. So when I put on my next coat, instead of the painting coming through, this beautiful soapstone color is going to come through instead. I ended up covering most of the box with soapstone since the paintings were very large, but look at all that beautiful texture we created with the fresco powder. Now I'm going to take fusion paint in the color Chateau and I'm going to paint the entire piece. I'm probably going to end up doing two coats of paint on here. Chateau is a beautiful off-white color. I feel like it's very similar to a drop cloth and it looks really beautiful with the soapstone color. Next, I'm going to take some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand the whole piece and you're going to see that beautiful soapstone color coming through. Also, some of the natural wood on the edges are going to come through. And if you don't have one of these little sanders at your craft table, you absolutely need one. So I'm going to leave a link not only to the sander, but everything that I use in this video in the description below. I am absolutely loving the way that this is looking. So you can see how that blue is coming through and then we have the wood as well. And it's just a great way to kind of get a realistic natural age look. 
I wanted to use the IOD type setting stamp to put recipes right here, but as you can see, it is very tight. This B is just a placeholder for the E since I only have one letter of each. So I think what I'm gonna do is use the letterpress stamp. It has the same font right here, but smaller. I have the word recipe spelled out on a thin mount. If you are stamping and do not have a thin mount, I highly recommend them. I actually would order two, one to keep to the size it comes in. It comes in in a large size and then one to cut it down so you have every size that you need. I'm going to be, oh wait, let me take my B off. I'm using that as a spacer. I don't want to actually sand that. I'm using ink in the color stone gray. It's going to look clear, but I promise you there is ink on there. So I'm going to take it. And I'm just going to put it, I already have it where I want it on the piece. So now I just need to center it. And then you want to push it down. And there you go. You see, it's just a very light, subtle gray. And that is exactly what I want it. Now I need to go in and do my extra E. So I have the E on a smaller thin mount. And I'm just going to go in and line it up the best that I can. And you're going to stamp it down. I want to add a few embellishment stamps. So I have the Alpha Belly stamp, which I love. And I want to put a little stamp here. And then I want to turn it around and put it that way. So I'm going to put it on my thin mount. Oops. I'm going to ink it up using the same gray ink. I'm going to stamp this side. I'm going to ink it up. And then I'm going to stamp the outside. I'm loving how this gray is just very subtle. I didn't want anything that was going to stand out too much. I wanted something that was going to go with the age look that I was going for on this piece. Okay, that looks so good. I just love these Alpha Belly stamps. I think I want to put one right here. Let's see. I'm thinking maybe this one. It has a flower and it's straight. So I'm going to put that one on my thin mount. Y'all can see why it's so great to have all these different sizes. Make sure it's on a flat surface. So you get all of the pieces of the stamp. I'm going to lift this up and then I'm going to stamp it right in the center. Absolutely beautiful. I'm loving the stamp so much. I feel like we also need to do one on each side. Hey guys, I hope y'all are enjoying the video so far. I want to take a minute to tell y'all about today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you do not know what Squarespace is, it is an online hosting platform. And that is who actually hosts my e-commerce store, juliesdesignsandsigns.com. And whether you have an online store, a local business, if you just want to create a portfolio or blog or offer a service, Squarespace has so many different options to host your website. So Squarespace has everything that you need to grow your business online. You can create a website using their very easy to use templates, designer fonts, color palettes. You can easily create an e-commerce store and you can also market your business by connecting your social accounts and by using their email campaigns. Squarespace is extremely user friendly. Even if you have no designer background, they have all these templates for you to pick from. It is really so easy, you guys. So if you're interested in trying out Squarespace, y'all go to squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs, and they are giving my viewers 10% off when you use code Julie's Designs and Signs, and I will have a link to everything in the description below for y'all. One of my favorite antique finishes is black pieces with some rich natural wood coming through. Well, in this project, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get that look. I thrifted this piece at the Goodwill bins and I thought it was a book holder, but your comments let me know it was actually a holder for these little glass canisters. Unfortunately, when I was getting ready for this video, the top fell off and broke, but it's okay. We're going to go with it. But I'm thinking it would be cute for both a canister holder 
and books. But first, we need to paint this. I think milk paint is going to give me the exact look I'm going for. I'm using infusion milk paint in the color Little Back Dress, and it comes in a powder form, so you mix half powder with half water. Once my milk paint is all dry, I'm going to paint my piece. I'm going to put at least two coats of the milk paint on here. When I am using milk paint on the second coat of paint, I like to get it on there and then take my heat gun out and dry the second coat of paint with the heat gun. What happens is it just, I find it gives it more of an aged look. It dries it in place. And if I wanna add more texture to it, then I just stipple on some more paint and dry it. And it always kind of crackles and chips in those areas. Do you see all of the texture that that heat and the stippling was able to create? Now, if you're not into that look, then don't do that and it'll, you'll have a smoother um, finish. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some 220 grit sandpaper, I'm gonna sand my piece and I'm gonna sand all the edges and bring back some of that natural wood color. I also want some of that dark wood tone to come through. So I'm going to take a damp rag and I'm also going to wet distress a little bit. And you'll see it's kind of bringing back some of the dark wood. So I'll have the black, the dark wood and the natural wood coming through. Once I have it distressed and looking the way that I want, I'm going to use Fusion's beeswax to seal it up. So with the beeswax, it comes like this. You put it on your brush and then you're going to brush it on your piece you're going to let it sit for about 30 minutes and then you're going to wipe all of the excess off and sealing this black color is going to bring it to that deep rich dark color that we're looking for I absolutely love how that angel head terracotta planter came out that I did a few weeks ago in a video. So when I found this beautiful terracotta bust, I decided that I wanted to uh, try the same thing on this one and see how it comes out. First step is a little bit of green paint. This is fusion in the color lichen. And then I'm gonna use my spritzer bottle just to water it down. I'm also gonna do a little bit at the bottom and I'm just gonna let it drip. So that way the bottom and the top will kind of look like it has a little bit of moss growing on it. Now that the green is dry, I'm gonna add fusion paint in the color raw silk. I already spritz a little bit of water on here. And once I get it painted, I'm gonna spritz a little bit more. We want that terracotta color to come through. We want that green to come through. So you really want to add the water on, that way it kind of drips down and gives it this more realistic distressed look like it's been sitting outside aging and weathering forever. Now, if you don't like the drippy look, you could just add less water, but I personally love the way that looks. So now I'm going to spritz it again, and I just got some potting soil from my garden, and I'm just going to add this on here. I'm just going to liberally put it on. I'm going to let it dry and kind of brush off any excess that is on here, and then I'm going to take a clear sealer and I'm just going to seal all of that dirt in. You can also use an antiquing wax and I definitely use that a lot but I think the dirt just gives it a more natural look like it's been sitting outside and that is what I'm going for with this piece. My mom gave me these little glass pieces. They went like this in some little candle thing that she had, but I immediately thought they would make cute little cloches. I have these little wood pieces that are ordered on Amazon. I believe they're coasters, but I can just think of a million other things that I can do with them. They fit perfectly on these cloches, but I like to do two different sizes. So I have this little spindle and I figured I could glue it on here and then we'll have two cloches in two different sizes. So I'm gonna use my Gorilla Glue and I'm gonna glue these two wood pieces together. 
Of course, I'm going to be painting these. I actually want to do a wash on them and just give them an antique look. So I'm going to be using fusion paint in the color chocolate. I'm just going to wet it down and apply the paint. It's kind of like putting a stain on it, except this dries so much faster than a stain. And it's going to give it a nice matte antique look. Even though the little spindle is already brown, I want the brown tones to match. So I'm going to put the wash on here as well. All right, guys, I hope that y'all enjoy today's video. Y'all leave a comment below and let me know what's your favorite project that I created today. And of course, all of the products and the projects that I created will be available on my website, juliesdesignsandsigns.com. And I will have everything linked in the description. And just wanted to remind y'all, y'all, I don't even know where June went. I feel like it flew by. We are at the end of June and y'all know what happens at the beginning of every month. The first Wednesday of every month, I have the vintage drop on my website. So that is coming up very soon, July 5th. Y'all mark y'all calendars, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Everything that I've thrifted for all month long becomes available for you to purchase on my website. And if y'all are not following my Julie Thrifts channel, y'all definitely go follow that. I will take y'all on all of my thrifting adventures so y'all can actually see me find the items that I use on these DIY thrift flip videos. Also, when this video is coming out, there's only gonna be a few days left to order this, but I wanted to show y'all the July colors of the month, how beautiful. So if you are not in the colors of the month club, you're definitely missing out. Y'all go order that. Every single month at the beginning of the month, you will get four perfectly curated fusion colors. I try to pick four colors that really go great together. This is gonna be the last bright colors that I do because we are about to get into the fall season and you know fusion has lots of very beautiful, rich colors that are perfect for the holiday season. So y'all go check all that out once again. I hope y'all enjoy today's video. And if you're interested in starting your own website, y'all go check out squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs. And they are giving my viewers 10% off. And I'll also have all of that in the description for y'all. Y'all have a great day. And I will see y'all in the next video. Mm -hmm.